All right, let's look at the questions from the checkpoint for module four. So starts off with a couple of true or false questions. First of all, if f prime of x is positive, greater than zero over some interval, then we know that f of x is only increasing over that same interval. So what does it mean if f if the derivative of a function is positive? That means that the function itself is increasing. So even though they're written differently, this f prime of x po being positive and f of x increasing, those are equivalent ideas. This is true. Uh, question two. If f double prime of x is positive, then we know that f is only increasing over the same interval. So let's break this down. What does f double prime being positive mean? Um, so in general, if a function's derivative is positive, that means that the function whose derivative that is, is increasing. So the second derivative, so f double prime is the derivative of what? It's the derivative of f single prime. So this means that f prime of x is increasing. The real question is though, does that mean that f of x is increasing? And the answer there is maybe, but not necessarily, because let's go this way. Let's say I have a graph that looks like this. Um, what's the right way to do this? So let's say I have negative slopes, but they're getting more positive. So one thing we didn't say here is that f prime of x being greater than zero, that means I am concave up. So another way to think about this, is it possible for a function to be concave up and decreasing? Um, I think that I have just drawn an example of that. So since I showed you a counterexample, this one has to be false. Uh, which of the following statements are true about this graph? So we have five statements. Um, more than one might be true, so let's check all of them. F prime of X is less than zero over the intervals negative infinity to negative one and one to infinity. So what does it mean for F prime of X to be less than zero? What does that mean about the actual function we have graphed? Well, that means that F is decreasing. So do we believe this function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative one? Where is negative one? Negative one is here. And where is positive one? So do we believe this function is decreasing on the left of this left hash mark and on the right of the right hash mark? So any of these slopes in here are gonna be negative. So I believe that we can say that first box is true. F prime of X is zero at the point negative one, negative three. So here and one, one here. Um, what does it mean for F prime of X to be zero? Well, I mean, the instantaneous rate of change is zero or the slope of a tangent line is zero. I believe a slope that I could draw here would be horizontal. I believe that one's also true. Uh, F prime of, I'm oh, sorry, F double prime of X is zero, or sorry, is positive over the interval zero to infinity. Let's think about that. What does it mean for F double prime of X to be positive? Well, that means that F is concave up. From zero to infinity, is my, gr is my graph concave up? Well, it looks like if I were to draw slopes of tangent lines, they would start by being positive. Then at some point they're gonna be zero. Then at some point they're gonna be negative. So I believe from zero to infinity, F prime is decreasing, which is not possible. That, that, is, that is concave down, that is not concave up. So I'll reject the third bullet. F double prime of X equals zero at the point zero, negative one. So let's think about that. What does it mean 
for f double prime of x to be zero. Well, that means that we have neither concave up nor concave down. So what does that mean? What does it mean if a function's derivative is zero? Well, then that means the function that that derivative came from is neither increasing nor decreasing. So f prime of x, neither increasing nor decreasing. What does it mean for f prime of x to, and again, like, I know I'm kind of building through this slowly, but I think this is important for, you know, we have three different functions that are all related in a very specific way. It makes sense to kind of go through them in this serial way, at least in the beginning. So what does it mean for f prime of x to either increase nor decrease? Well, that means that f, um, if your instantaneous rate of change, uh, let me think about the way to word this. If f prime of x is neither increasing nor decreasing, then I think we can say that f prime of f of x has, you know, at least in a very small neighborhood, um, the instantaneous rate of change is not changing. What does a function look like if its instantaneous rate of change is not changing? Um, I think that's going to look like a straight line. So. If we look around the neighborhood of the point zero, negative one, does it look like we have something that looks linear? I believe we do. So I'm going to accept this one too. Another way to think about this is look at what's happening. We already said that this graph, this function is concave down from zero to infinity. What do we think about the concavity from negative infinity to zero? So I have one negative tangent line here. I believe I have a zero tangent line or slope. A tangent line with a slope of zero here, and I have a tangent line with a slope positive here. I believe I'm concave. So I believe I'm concave up on the left side of the y-axis and concave down on the right side of the y-axis, which means there needs to be a point in between where the concavity changes. So we're at f double prime of zero. So a couple ways to look at that. And final box, f prime of x is less than zero over the interval negative one, one. So what does it mean for f prime of x to be less than zero? That means that your function is decreasing. And over the interval negative one, one, our function increases. So this one cannot be true. All right, moving on to question four. I um, want to sketch a graph of a single continuous function. So we're told we're told of a point we want this graph to pass through. So let's begin there. Has a y-intercept at zero two. So let's kind of just break this down and. and so again, like we did with the uh, one of the homework questions, let's break this down into pieces. So what are the intervals we care about? So I want you to write down the x values where we're kind of like breaking up this graph. So it looks like the least of these is negative six. And then positive one, Positive three, and is that it? Looks like that's it. Um, okay, so what's happening between negative six, or sorry, between negative infinity and negative six? Well, we have f prime of x is less than zero. I think that means we have a decrease out here. Um, do we know anything about the concavity out there? We know that f double prime is greater than zero, so we are concave up. All right, what about between negative six and one? Between negative six and one, we have f prime of x is greater than zero, so we have increase. Uh, what about the concavity there? Between negative six and one, 
it looks like we have concave up. Oh, wait, no, that's not true. So from negative six to three, we have concave down. Negative six to one is included in there. All right, how about from one to three? From one to three, we have decrease because the f prime of x is less than zero. And the concavity from one to three, still concave down. And then finally, from three to infinity, we have f prime of x is greater than zero. So we have um, increase. And what's the concavity there? The concavity is concave up because f prime, f double prime is positive over here. So those are all taken care of. We'll deal with those. And then we also were told there are two x values where f of x is not differentiable. So I think there's going to have to happen at, you know, if they're going to happen every, anywhere, they need to happen kind of at these boundary lines because... You know, on the inside of this thing, we're told that the derivative is either positive or negative. And if the function is not differentiable, then it can't, the, the derivative can't be positive or negative if, you're, if you can't even define it. So you have some choice over which two values you're going to have your function not be differentiable. Let's say that's going to happen at, uh, let's say that's going to happen at one and three. So not differentiable. And again, you have a lot of choice on this. I am making a choice. That doesn't mean that you need to make the same choice as I do. Okay, so let's start from y-intercept of 0, 2, and kind of build up from there. We know that in this interval where the y-intercept is, we're increasing and going concave down. So I think it's going to have to increasing, but at a decreasing rate. We're going to start decreasing. Oh, and I said I wanted this to be uh not differentiable so i'm gonna have i'm gonna have a hard cusp here uh, because i want this function to be continuous everywhere that's something that i kind of glossed over so i want to have continuity but i want this to be on uh, non-differentiable so what's that going to look like um i want to decrease here but be concave down i'm gonna have a hard cusp here So uh, it's going to be harder if I'm doing concave down. Let's try this again. Um, so it's decreasing. It goes from increasing to decreasing. I'm changing my mind. I'm going to change my not differentiable to negative six. Hopefully that's something that'll work a little better for me. So for here, I'm going to just go from a positive first derivative to a negative first derivative. And then I'm going to go to an increase. So here's where I think I can put a hard cusp. So it's going to be increasing and concave up. So between one and three, I have a decreasing function because all, any tangent line I would draw in here is going to be negative. I'm going to have a negative slope. Um, and here I am going to be increasing at an increasing rate because that's what concave up is. So I think from the right-hand side of the y-axis, I have this covered. Um, what does it mean to be concave down? Well, I need to be decreasing or increasing at a decreasing rate. So that could look like this. But then what happens at x equals negative six. We want over there, we want to be decreasing concave up. But I also want to have a break in differentiability here. So I'm going to try to shoot for another, another cusp. I want to be decreasing, but at a concave up rate. So I think think it can look like this. So 
let's disregard that right there. I think this meets all of our criteria. Again, yours might look different, but uh, lots of ways to approach this. Uh, question five, uh, P of T is the population of Mexico in millions, where T represents the number of years since 2000. Using the complete sentence, explain the meaning of P of five equals 78. So we have a T value of five. Uh, what does that mean? So basically that means our year is gonna be 2000 plus five. So that's 2005. So in 2005, the population is, so P of five is 78. Um, so are there 78 people in Mexico? No, we are told that these, this number is expressed in millions. So in 2005, the population of Mexico was 78 million people. All right, moving on to question six. Um, same function, same definition of P, but now we're told that P prime of five is equal to 1.5. So what does that mean? If P represents the population of Mexico for any given time, what does P prime represent? Well, that's going to be the rate of, a rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change. So let's at least start there the instantaneous rate of change of what so it still it still matters what the function like what the input and output variables of this function are so what's the output variable or what's the yeah what's the dependent variable the instantaneous rate of change of the population of mexico because that's what he signifies the population of mexico with respect to time is 1.5. What does 1.5 mean though? Well, maybe the units will clear that up for us. The theme is one, uh, uh, so this is instantaneous rate of change of the population of Mexico with respect to time is 1.5, what are the units of P? A million people. Per what? What is time measured in per year? So we have a this rate, this instantaneous rate of change is 1.5 million people per year. What does that mean? Well, it's a positive number. So what does that mean here? That means that the, the population is growing at an instantaneous rate of one and a half million people per year. And finally, uh, question seven, same, you know, same premise here. So we are told that P prime of 12 is positive and P double prime of 12 is negative. So what does that mean? So when's this happening? So in 2012, so we're being told that P prime of 12 is positive. So that's the rate of change of population with respect to time. So it's positive. So in 2012, the population of Mexico is increasing. And to be clear, this increase comes from this fact here what we're told about the first derivative. So what does the second derivative tell you? The second derivative is negative, so that means the population of Mexico is increasing at a decreasing rate. So kind of like with the questions where I ask you to graph something that encapsulates a bunch of different characteristics, I wrote three sentences and they're almost certainly not worded the same way you worded yours. Um, I am interested in how you communicate your ideas, ideas 
um, I do not, I do not necessarily want you to word them exactly the same way as, as we do. Uh, but hopefully these make sense. Let me know if you have any questions.